everyone, it's Darby from rejoiceandcreate.com. Well, thanks for stopping by today. If you're new to my channel, please subscribe so we can craft together in the future. Well, this is the project I have today, and I think it's an adorable little carrot treat box. I was inspired by the um, beehive that I had made a few weeks ago, and that's not my original design for the cut, but when I made put the beehive together and I was looking at it, I thought, wow, what a cute little carrot that might make. So indeed, I turned it into a carrot, and this is my prototype. You'll see I have some marks on the outside of it. But as you can also see that there's a lot of different punched leaves and fronds on there, and this is from someone who is a punch hoarder. And what I did is I just punched a whole bunch of different things from some scrap cardstock I had in my scrap bin, and I glued them on after I had completed the carrot. Now, that's an awful lot of work for um, something if you're making more than one of them. So I actually made some other ones as well. Now, this one started with a six by six, but I actually ended up cutting it down to five by six because I missed some score lines, and it was my prototype. So it ended up being five inches by six inches. But I wanted to keep it um, under six inch width, but you can make it any length. And this is actually what it turned out with the six by six. And this top is much easier. I just used a two inch strip of um, origami paper actually, glued it on the top and then curled it out. And I think it makes a very cute little carrot top as well. Now I also made one that was four inches by six inches when I started, and that's this one. And I think that's pretty adorable. Um, you can still fit a couple of Ferrero shares in there or a few little things. If you put something that's smaller, you can see the hole in there. Uh, if you put something smaller, you'll need to put a little cellophane bag. But I think it would look really cute even with a cellophane bag sticking out the top. And this one was 4 inches by 6 inches. So you can get 6 of them out of a 12 by 12 inch sheet. And then I thought how adorable that one looked. It almost looks like a pineapple. So then I switched over and I actually made it with an orangey kind of pineapple color and I put the greener color origami paper on the top and I think that looks like a very adorable little pineapple and of course that was a four by six inch one as well. Now you can add a strip of paper on the top for the greenery or you can punch out some things you don't need as many as I did to glue on the top after you're done. And I'm going to use a six by six inch piece of paper so we're going to end up one this size. All right, let's get scoring. All right, this is my six by six inch piece of paper. And let me show you a template of what we're going for. There are a lot of score lines because we're actually making an octagonal box. So there's gonna be eight sides to it. But because I wanted to keep it within that six inch piece of paper, they're not all the same width. There's a three quarter inch and then a five eighths of an inch, three quarter, five eighths, three quarter, five eighths. And um, we'll just have to remember which one those are when we go to cut off our little end pieces but let's go ahead and get scoring on those. So let's score at three quarters of an inch, one and three eighths, two and one eighth, two and three quarters, three and one half, four and one eighth, four and seven eighths, and five and a half. Okay, now let's turn one of the other ends towards the left, and this one is going to be the carrot top. So this is gonna be up by the greenery. So on the end that you want to be the top of your carrot, we'll score at one quarter of an inch, three quarters of an inch, and one and one quarter of an inch, okay? Now we'll turn the other end, this is the bottom that will be the tip of the carrot, and we're going to score this one at three quarters of an inch and one and a half inches. Okay, so this is our half inch strip over here. So I'm gonna turn that up like this so it's the same as our template. As you can see, we're not quite done yet because we do have some cutting and scoring to do for the um, end of the carrot. But let's go ahead and fold and burnish our score lines first. Okay, so I have it set the same way as my template right now. And if you notice on the bottom, I went ahead and scored that first one down, that second one in, and the third one down. So we end up with something like this. Okay, all right, so we're gonna start on the pointy, the end, pointed end of the carrot first. And what we're going to do is we're gonna cut off some pieces. So we'll start by cutting up each one of these score lines to that first intersecting score line.
Okay, now this is the half an inch glue tab, so we're gonna take that piece off and angle it slightly. And now all of these rectangle pieces are going to go and all these three quarter inch squares will stay. So this first one is a rectangle, so that will go. The second's a square, it'll stay. The third is a rectangle. The fourth is a square, and so on. All right, so this is what we have right now, and you'll notice we're going to score some lines in a triangle, just like we did for the bee, uh, beehive a few weeks back. So just go ahead and take a ruler and a stylus, and what we're going to do, let me move this over so it's closer to me, and what we'll do is we're just going to eyeball the middle. If, there were, if I were to give you a score, it would actually be like in the sixteenths of an inch, but it's easier just to go ahead and eyeball the center of that section. So just make it, have an eyeball and just make a score right at the center of that section. And that is close enough, because what we're going to do next is we're going to, from that score we just made, we're going to use a ruler and score down to the bottom corners, bottom left and right corner of that same rectangle that that score was in. Okay, so now we can just take a minute and we're going to fold that rectangle or the triangle down by folding these score lines we just made right over the top of it like this. Okay, so that's what it looks like right now. All right, so let's go ahead and glue, put some glue on that glue tab and we'll glue it together and then we'll work on the other end of the carrot. Okay, so what we're going to work on next are these little ellipses we're going to punch into the back of the carrot and that's what allows us to cinch the carrot together. Now, if you have an envelope punch board, you can use it, but you cannot push it all the way in because if you push this all the way in, the hole that it creates will be too big and when you go to punch the next one, they'll connect and your end will fall off. So what I would do is I would take a quarter inch strip of cardstock and I'd put it just right on that right side so you can push this in and line it up. Now you wanna center that middle score line right in the center of the punch. So center it like that way, butt it up like this, Punch it, and that will give you a piece in there. Now, a quarter inch might be a wee bit too big. You may try 3 sixteenths of an inch to give you a little bit more, but definitely don't go past half because you need to have a space in there so you can tie it together and, and cinch it down. What I'm going to do is use a circle punch. All right, so if you don't have an envelope punch board, you can use a circle punch, and I'm going to use a one inch circle punch and then I'm going to, again, I'm going to line my circle right up on that center line of the three, and I'm moving in just about a quarter of an inch. So I'm going to move in a quarter of an inch, and I'll repunch that one. Well, actually, I'll punch it next to it so you can see what it looks like. Go in a quarter of an inch and punch it. And you can see this one gives us a bigger, a bigger hole than the envelope punch board would. But either one will be just fine to cinch the carrot top down. All right, so go ahead and finish the rest of them. Okay, so I've, I've cut the little elliptical holes in all of them, and when you tie it down, it'll pull, cinch down like that. But let's go ahead and glue our carrot tip together, the tip of our carrot. So go ahead and snug those all in, and they're going to lay on top of each other. And then what I do is I just hold my hand over this so I can flap these up. And then I'll use a little liquid glue because it gives me a minute to move them around and get them in the right places. All right, so this is my back one over here because I see the seam on the inside. So I'm going to do the sides first. I'll put that side down first. 
and then the back, and then where my front is. Okay, just make sure those squares are all centered over each other. Give that a minute to catch and we can turn it over and press it down with a pen or a bone folder. Okay, let me pop my top back up. <laughs> okay, so now we're gonna go ahead and put our carrot top on and I'm going to use a six inch by three inch section of a green. You could use any size you want, really. If you want a really long one, you can use a longer one. Um, this one is a designer series paper, so it's a little bit heavier than copy paper. It's a, a little bit heavier paper. Uh, you can use a green copy paper, or you can use even use an origami paper. And that's what this one is, is actually an origami paper. So it's very thin and lightweight. But what we're gonna do is just put a strip of glue along the bottom edge. And then wherever my seam is, my seam's right there, so I'm going to start it right where my seam is. And line it right up, and I'm going to butt it up against that first score line. Okay. Now I'm just pressing those uh, creases into the carrot top. If you have a very, very thin paper, you may not need to do that. It's just this little thicker paper, so I wanted to kind of go along with the carrot. And what I'm going to do is actually cut some strips right into the carrot top. Now for the wider sections, these are the three quarter inch sections, I'm going to cut down each side and I'm actually going to cut it into four sections by just eyeballing the middle and then cutting each one of those that are left in half. And it doesn't matter if it's exact or not. And on these smaller sections, the ones that are five eighths, in, five eighths of an inch, I'm just gonna eyeball thirds and I'm gonna cut that piece into thirds. Okay, and then what I do is just curl some of them. Curl a few front, curl a few back. There's really no rhyme or reason. See if I get some going corkscrewish. All right, so that's a wild carrot top. Let me go ahead and tie it. And I'm gonna use a twine on this one. You definitely would put your things in there now and you could use the cellophane bag. Oh, actually one thing before I do tie it is on, I liked the way it was cinched down a little bit better if the top was a little bit smaller. So what I did is on the wide sections, I left them. So that three quarter of an inch section I left, but on those smaller sections, I just pinched it down i pinched the two sides together by pushing the center down and pinching the two folds together on all of them and it kind of let me snug that top down even a little bit more to make it look like the top of a carrot all right so let's go ahead and tie that together now all right, so here it looks after I get the tag and I got it tied together, and that's a one wild carrot top. <laughs> but that was about four inches wide. You don't have to go that wide. And let me show you all the ones that I created. So here are all the carrot treat boxes that I created. Um, these were six by six, 
This one was six by four, and this one was about six by five inches. It was my prototype, so I had cut it down. And you can use different things for the tops as well, whether it's paper, origami paper, or even punching some leaves out. But I think all of them are really adorable. And they can fit a lot of treats inside. Even the smallest one can fit a couple of Ferrero shares or a little goodie bag full of M&Ms or Reese's Pieces or Hershey's Kisses. And it may not be one that you want to make for an entire classroom, but certainly for the grandkids or the kids, it would be really cute in their Easter basket. Well, I hope you enjoyed this project and give it a try. If you liked the video, please subscribe and hit the bell notification icon to be notified of new videos as I upload them. For more information on this project or others I've done, please visit rejoiceandgreed.com. And as always, until we meet again, I hope your days are blessed. Bye!